Welcome to a very exciting NCIX Tech Tips. It's all about Kepler. So Kepler is NVIDIA's latest generation architecture. We've seen it on $500 graphics cards, $400 graphics cards, and $300 graphics cards. And now we're seeing that price trickle down continue to roll with the GeForce GTX 660, which comes in at around 250 bucks. <laughs> Now let's have a look at the GTX 660 that we're going to be focused on today. It's the MSI GeForce GTX 660 Twin Frozer. So that is an overclocked edition with an aftermarket cooler. Not only does it have their Twin Frozer 3 cooler, which includes their heat pipes, dual fan configuration, as well as their propeller blades for additional airflow, it also has a fully custom PCB with more power phases than the reference design from NVIDIA. That means potentially better overclocking, better cooling, and a more stable and cooler and quieter overall experience. Now, like all Kepler cards, the GTX 660 comes with a very impressive list of features and specs. So number one is it has extremely low power consumption given the performance of the card. It has 960 CUDA cores and it is clocked at over one gigahertz at the highest GPU boost. So GPU boost dynamically adjusts the clock speed of your graphics processing unit according to the load and the thermal limits and power limits that it needs to stay within. It has a 192-bit memory bus, and this particular card has a 2-gig frame buffer, which is more than enough for a card in this performance class. It also has full support for the usual range of NVIDIA features, including 2-way SLI, CUDA, PhysX, as well as NVIDIA surround, using up to three displays in surround with one auxiliary display, and full support for adaptive V-Sync, as well as all the new anti-aliasing technologies from NVIDIA, including FXAA, which is a high quality, but much faster anti-aliasing than some of the more traditional methods. Now, in terms of performance, there's no real surprises with the GTX 660. So it's clocked a little lower, it's got a little bit less overall spec than the GTX 660 Ti. It's also using the GK106 core, which is slightly different from the GPU that's being used in the 660 Ti and higher. And you see that reflected in the performance. So it's about 15 to 20% slower in Battlefield 3 than the 660 Ti or Ti. And it is a little bit faster than the Radeon 7870 Hawk that we also overclocked and is in a very similar price bracket. If we have a look at Crisis 2, we only ran a couple of games this time just to get some idea of where it falls in place. You see about a 5 to, or rather, about a 10 to 12 percent performance difference between the 660 and the 660 tie, and you see it once again beating the 7870 pretty handily, but not really coming close to something like a 7950, which is, again, though, a significantly more expensive card. So in terms of the pricing and market position, I think the GTX 660 doesn't really hold any surprises. NVIDIA continues to just kick butt in terms of all the new GPUs they're releasing from 680 to 670 to 660 Ti to now the 660 non-Ti. So thank you for checking out this episode of NCIX Tech Tips, and don't forget to subscribe.